Hello friends and welcome back to The Dork Side. I'm the dork in the road and today I want to talk to you about why I think you actually should consider the DRZ400 even today in 2022. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet writing buddy, so please consider subscribing. A while back, friend of the channel and all-around awesome guy Tanner from Adventure Daily made a video entitled Don't Buy This Motorcycle in 2021, now 2022, DRZ 400S versus CRF 300L. And in that video, he runs down some points about why the DRZ is not a motorcycle that he would choose or he doesn't understand why people buy DRZs in this day and age when more modern options like the CRF 300L and the KLX 300 and all those exist. I don't necessarily disagree with some of the points he made, but I do disagree with the conclusion. And so I just want to make this video as kind of a response to talk about the other side of the coin, why I do think the DRZ 400 is a bike you should consider even in 2022, despite its outdated nature and other flaws. Laws. Worth pointing out that he did mention me specifically in that video, so it, you know, it feels appropriate to respond. And also, I talked to him and he's totally cool with it. I'm just going to kind of run down his points and just kind of give my take on the points that he made and then my conclusion at the end. Also, in that video, which you should go watch, go check out his channel, go subscribe and go watch his video. I'll link the video for you. He was enjoying a frosty, delicious beverage, and I think I might as well do the same, except instead of a beer, let's enjoy a delicious bourbon. We're enjoying some... Delicious bullet bourbon today. It is the middle of the day, so I'm not gonna go crazy here, but wouldn't hurt to have a little bit to sip on while we talk. Mm. Bullet is a great, reasonably priced bourbon if you're if you're looking for one. It's a very good daily drinker. His first point is that this bike, the DRZ400, is outdated technology and it is time for an upgrade. And I completely agree with that. This bike has not changed much at all since it was introduced in 2000 and it hasn't been updated in a long time. Obviously they can't because of emission standards. They're kind of grandfathered in. It's older technology and that makes it less desirable when compared to newer, more modern bikes like the KLX300 or the CRF300L. That's his point. I don't disagree that it's outdated. It's 100% outdated. I agree with that point. He goes on to argue that fuel injection, which is what the newer bikes have and this one doesn't, is better. I'm of two minds about this. Fuel injection has advantages. When I first started riding, I was definitely led to believe that carburetors were awful and fuel injection was the way to go. And now that I own a carbureted bike, I think some of that stuff is pretty exaggerated. As long as your bike is in good shape, good condition, you take care of it. You know, I do have to warm up my bike, but literally for a minute, I just start it up before I put my gloves on and I'm good to go. People always talk about elevation changes, but I've had this thing from sea level all the way up to like 6,000 feet. Barely noticed, actually I didn't notice any difference. I'm sure there was one, but not a noticeable one. So some of those concerns I just feel like are overblown. I guess in my mind, fuel injection is better in a lot of ways, but is it a deal breaker? No. And that's what I think the difference between his opinion and mine is, is a lot of the things, I don't disagree with his complaints, but I do disagree that some of those things are deal breakers, at least for me personally. Uh, another complaint he has is the five speed transmission versus the six speed. Speed. Again, yes, I can see the value of the six speed. However, his point is that the 250L, the 300L have six gears and it's better on the highway and the DRZ only has five and it isn't. But here's the thing, I owned a 250L for years and in my experience, and again, I'm a little heavier, a little wider, so the wind resistance is more of a factor, but that six gear was useless. Like you couldn't accelerate in it. It was almost as if you didn't have it. I could accelerate up to 65 in fifth and then put it in sixth in cruise, but in terms of making my daily life better on the motorcycle, I just, I didn't see the advantage of it at all. It's not such a huge difference that I care enough to buy a different motorcycle. I have ridden the 300L, I have less experience on it, and I will say the sixth gear on it is more useful. So I guess if you're going out and cruising on your dual sport on the highway a lot, and you really, really care about a 10% increase in comfort, then yeah, get the sixth gear bike. This thing will do 75, I made a whole video riding it on the freeway, I don't understand the complaints. It's just as uncomfortable to me as any other dual sport is on the freeway. So again, there's a difference, yeah. It's a noticeable difference, yeah. But is it a deal breaker? No, it's not a deal breaker, not to me. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. There is some advantage to having more gears because your gear ratios are slightly closer together or whatever for slow speed maneuvering. Again, small difference, there is a difference though. Uh, but with a little bit of clutch control, I feel like you can mitigate that anyway. His next point is weight. And 
in his video, and again, I hope you don't think I'm bashing on Tanner. I think he makes excellent points, and I don't, I honestly agree with 90% of them. But he talks about the weight of the DRZ and how heavy it is, and more importantly, how heavy it feels. Because this DRZ is actually a couple pounds lighter, I think, than my 250L was. And it's about 12 pounds heavier than the CRF 300L. But he says that the 300L wears its weight in a different way. It feels much lighter. This bike feels more top heavy, and I don't disagree with that. Uh, in my limited time with a 300L, I would say it feels slightly lighter. Lighter. It feels more lighter than it should only being 12 pounds lighter. But I actually enjoy the DRZ way more than my 250L. The DRZ feels lighter and more maneuverable. My 250L always felt clunky and squishy and top heavy to me. So I do think the 300L is a little bit better. I don't think the 250L is better personally in terms of the weight and how the weight feels. And that's the thing is that on paper you can look at stats all day and like yeah clearly one's lighter but not that much lighter but you can feel the difference and that's why it's important to ride them. But again it's a minor difference. It's, a, it's not a deal breaker. I just don't feel like it is. You're comparing like apples to green apples, like they're very close to the same thing. His other big complaint is the price of the DRZ, and I, for a new one, I don't disagree at all. Seven thousand dollars for this outdated motorcycle in 2022 is ridiculous, especially when you can buy much more modern, better equipped bikes for two thousand dollars less. It's way more expensive than the KLX 300 or the CRF 300, and it shouldn't be. So. I'll give you that point. It's too expensive for a new one. However, KLX 300, CRF 300 are brand new bikes. You can't even find a new one, let alone a used one out there. You can pick up a used DRZ for, I had a chance to buy a 2012 for 4,500 before I bought this one. I didn't buy it because the guy wouldn't negotiate, probably should have. Doesn't matter. The point is they're out there for cheaper. So yes, new prices are ridiculous, but you can buy a used DRZ and a well set up used DRZ if you're patient and willing to look and wait. Can't do that with the newer bikes. So I feel like it's a wash because new, completely true, the price is ridiculous. Used, the DRZ wins hands down because you can't find a new one of the others and you can't find a used one either because they're just not out there unless you want to wait six months. In his video, he does go on to admit that the DRZ has better suspension, and he says it feels more durable, which I think that is owing to its older technology, right? It's just a freaking tank. But he does say the 300L is smoother, and I don't disagree with that. The, the DRZ is a little rough around the edges. It definitely um, doesn't feel like a modern motorcycle. It feels a little bit older, a little bit more vibrate -y. That's how I feel about the individual points he made, right? I don't disagree with anything really majorly. I just have a different take and a different interpretation of those factors, but they're all true. The fundamental facts remain the same. One thing to keep in mind, and all due respect, Tanner, but he only owned the Supermoto version, the DRZ, and I don't remember really seeing any videos of him riding it off-road. Tanner, correct me if I'm wrong. Jump in the comments. But either way, he only had it for a limited time. He didn't have the S model. I just don't know if he got the full experience that is owning, riding, knowing, and loving the DRZ 400S in the limited time that he had it. And the reason why I disagree with his conclusion is not because of any of these individual factors. Like I said, he's right on the money on most of them. The reason that I disagree is that the DRZ 400S is the most fun motorcycle I've ever ridden in my entire life. Now I came to motorcycling late. It's true, I've only been at this five or six years. All of these things are true. I'm also a middle-aged, mediocre rider, and Tanner is young and quite skilled and can squeeze every ounce of performance out of every bike. I need something that's a little easier for me to ride and do what I need to do. I'm also heavier than him. All those factors considered, the DRZ is the most fun bike, and it is more fun than any of the other bikes that I've ridden. It is twice as fun as my 250L, no kidding, and I love that bike. I think it's a very easy to ride, beginner-friendly, very smooth motorcycle, but once you get a little bit of skill, it's not as fun. It's just not as fun. Tanner can ride the crap out of his. Totally true. That point always comes up whenever I quote unquote bash the CRF 250L, but I don't want to have to ride that hard. I just want it to do it. I don't want to have to be as good as him to have that much fun. I want to be myself, mediocre, middle-aged, and overweight. And the DRZ is way more fun. The throttle just begs to be twisted. This bike is so fun on the trail. So fun in the twisties. So fun on the forest roads. So fun on the road, really, anywhere but the freeway. This bike is insanely fun. I love riding it. Ask Beards Bikes and Camping. All I did when we were at Turatech was just gush about how much fun I was having riding this bike. That fun factor, that that sort of undefined je ne sais quoi, that puts this bike over the edge for me. And that, to me, is the reason you should consider this bike in 20. 2022. There is no other bike like it. And I mean that in terms of the price, right? There is no bike that's this fun, this reliable that you can pick up for $4,500 or $5,000. There isn't. That has this much power, that's this capable. Not for that price. There isn't. Y'all are going to come in with your, what about the 450L and 501? Fine. Twice as much and three times the maintenance. This is the ultimate everyman bike 
And that's why it's worth considering, in my opinion. And that's all this is, is my opinion. Just my opinion. Yes, on paper, it's old, overpriced, heavy, and outdated. But when you twist that throttle, it's like injecting pure fun directly into your veins. My DRZ is still the most fun bike I've ever owned, whether on the trails, in the woods, or in the twisties. It's just the perfect amount of power, at least for me. My 250L was fun, but not in the same way. It was slow, squishy, and unresponsive. Yes, it had sixth gear, but that was pretty much useless. I've only test ridden the 300L, and while it's definitely more responsive than my 250 was, it's just not fun in the same way this DRZ is. Tanner is a fantastic rider who can squeeze maximum performance out of any bike he rides, so his perspective is obviously different than mine as a mediocre middle-aged rider. But for me, the DRZ is way more fun than the 250L or the 300s that I've ridden. I'm very happy with it. I don't see the 300L or the KLX 300 as an upgrade from this at all. If I did, I would own one of those bikes and not this one. But having ridden them both, I'm sticking with my DRZ personally. So what do you think? Am I crazy? I think if you haven't ridden one, you probably don't get it. You probably think I'm crazy because you're looking at the paper stats and on paper it doesn't make sense. But if you've ridden and owned one, my guess is you know what I'm talking about. This bike's fun. It's fantastic. You should test ride one. You should test ride any bike you're considering, but if you're looking for a do-it-all dual sport that's hella fun, easy to maintain, and idiot-proof, the DRZ should be on your list. That's it. Let me know in the comments, would you consider a DRZ in 2022? I think you should, but you know, you're gonna have another opinion. That's great. Did you watch Tanner's video? Make sure you go over to his channel, give him a subscribe, check out his videos, lots of great riding stuff, all kinds of stuff. He's building an overlanding, uh, like a van life rig right now. The guy is really entertaining. Go watch him. But for now, and as always, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching, and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I uh, thank you. Excellent! Can't let that go to waste, can we? <sighs> Lunch of champions. <laughs> it's seriously 1124. All right, editing time.